For Luis Milan Lara, taking pictures is all about capturing happy moments. Having learned the technical skills that helped him become a professional photographer, he could have taken his talents anywhere. But he knew Hickory, which was home to his family and friends, was the place that would bring the most joy to his work. It's also been a launching pad for the entrepreneurial spirit he inherited from his father, who helped create a local hidden gem his family still operates. Listen in as Luis talks food, family, and photography with host Hal Rowe. Good morning. Welcome back to First Talk with Hal Rowe on WHKY Talk Radio for the Greater Hickory Metro. We're continuing our series this morning of Making Living Better right here in Catawba County. Joining us this morning is Luis Bian Lara. He is a photographer, social media specialist, business advocate, and mentor, and uh, kind enough to uh, take time out of his busy schedule and join us this morning. Nice to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Hal. Thank you for having me here you're on the more, show. You're more than welcome. We have met before, and every time, just about every time I have seen you, you've had a camera. This is one of the first times I believe I've ever seen you. You didn't have a camera in your head, hand, or around your neck. So it's nice to, to have you with us this morning. We'll talk about photography. But first of all, I'd like to find out a little bit about uh, the folks and how you came to be in Catawba County. And that's an interesting story as well. Now, you were born, if I'm not mistaken, in Mexico, right? Mexico City? That's right. Absolutely. Which I was... is a big world-class city. I mean, people don't realize sometimes that Mexico City is one of the largest cities, I guess, in the world. I don't know. And actually, Chapultepec is one of the, one of the parks in Mexico City that was just just, um, uh, what do you call it? It was, uh, uh, it won an award for being one of the top parks. Oh, really? Yes, in the world, so. Wow. So, uh, but you were, you were born there. So I was born in Mexico City. Right. And, uh, so my father emigrated to the United States, um, in 1993. And so, um, he was here for about six, seven months before he, um, was able to work enough and then bring my mom and my sis- my brother and yeah and right. myself over and, and uh, a lot of different but uh, some of it was actually in the uh, was in restaurant work because he loved not only uh, tacos eating them I enjoy eating them but I also enjoyed making them for people right so it's, that's part of it is that so right? he was he he's always been an innovator businessman and he always knew he wanted to have his business and so um, he, one of the things he loved and enjoyed doing was cooking right and um and not just any kind of cooking he specifically liked cooking tacos for right. everyone and so um when he came to catawba county he found a passion for that and people followed his cooking and wow. his tacos and so um that was always just really good to enjoy seeing that um my dad had a following for he had a following how about that and you helped with that did you not you learned a little bit about cooking and learned a little bit about making those those tacos you worked in the family business absolutely yes so um i i helped more with um picking up the dirty plates and and the napkins on the floor but um but um absolutely um over time i kind of just enjoyed seeing him chop up the meat and the vegetables and put the tortillas on the grill and you know flip them and then you know, make the tacos. And this was, if I'm not mistaken, if I've got this right, uh, it was kind of a family enterprise. A lot of people got involved in the family with this, right? Everybody so, kind of came together. Yes. Because in a Hispanic, Latino culture, that's a big thing, is everybody, is, family is very, very important. Yes. And um, so it was a thing that he had started and then his siblings kind of just also followed. And then okay. um, he actually had a couple businesses in Hickory, um, one in Hickory and then one in Conover that were both like a taqueria where they had, you sell tacos. Right. Um, and what's it called again? Taqueria. Which taqueria. Is a, taqueria, okay. which is a specific um, meaning for selling tacos. Gotcha. Focusing on, on tacos. Gotcha. And so he had, a, he had a taqueria in Conover and one in Hickory. And um, the one in Hickory he um, sold to his sibling. And then my uncle Carlos sold to my cousin 
Elizabeth, who right. is now currently the owner of Las Isabelas okay. in downtown Hickory. Las Isabelas. Yes. Okay, very good. So the family tradition so carries tra- on. And it, and it still carries on. It's, you know, it's, it's really good to see how much that um, location and business has just grown so much over the past years. I think that's fantastic. Very, yes. very good. Now, you had an opportunity uh, to move around a little bit uh, in uh, North Carolina, Virginia. You came back here. Uh, what was one of the reasons that you decided to come back and because as you got older, you had a choice where you could live. And, and uh, let's face it, you could live anywhere in the, in the world, in the United States, that you wanted to live. What were some of the reasons that you decided with the family travels and with the different things uh, that were going on with your family, what were one of the reasons that you decided to come back and live in this area? Well, um, so when I was in Virginia, I um, um, was able to afford a camera and I bought, I bought it. And so um, I realized that photography was really what I wanted to do. And so I got into photography photography more and um and then there was something that was missing i i usually i wanted to capture happy moments and i didn't have family and i didn't have friends in Ah, virginia and so my pictures were meaningless because i you know it was just not where my where i I so maybe the, the form was there and the color and you had the technical part of it but not the not the family not part. Not the feeling. Not the feeling, right. Yes. And not that, that part of it that's so important right. to photography. That's interesting. So I came back to Hickory, and so, um, uh, gosh, it was, um, when I came back, it was just, it was great because my, uh, my whole family is here. My siblings are here. My mother is here. And so um, it was just a, it was just a warm feeling just coming back to Hickory. And so then I focused on just living in Hickory and helping out and just continuing to grow my photography business and um, and grow to do more with marketing as well and right. so um I found it interesting that your first camera, you had seen pictures, and you had seen pictures in school and at other places, and uh, your first camera really was a sacrifice for your family. It really was for your mom, <laughs> because so many uh, so many of us, maybe, have, have come from a place where mom's working hard, and everybody is maybe going, uh, you know, without in the family, and doing their very best to make uh, uh, both ends meet. That happens, <laughs> believe me, in my family a lot still today, but mom made a big sacrifice sacrifice for you with that first camera i thought that was a wonderful story that you yes my um my mother um was a single mother and so having three kids was um was was tough and so um but she did everything she could to make us happy right in a way that um pleased her and so um we were we were at a flea market and so i'd seen a camera that was probably 13 14 dollars not including the um film Right, and so um, I, I asked my mom if she could buy buy me the camera, and she said, "I don't know. Let me think about it. Let's keep walking around." Right. So um, I asked her again, and she said, "Okay, let's go get the camera." And so, like fourteen dollars, um, got the camera, <laughs> and then we went and bought the film. And the film was I don't remember exactly right. how much, but it wasn't it wasn't just one film. It was right. the amounts of films right. that we needed to buy to keep taking pictures and so um so you had to get the film and you had to get the developing so that (laughs) and all of that yeah so then that was that was the money the money was more in the film and the developing right and um but she but she knew how much i enjoy taking pictures of family gatherings and friends and taking it to school and taking pictures of friends and so um and that's a big that's a big part of of what I, i think that when i read a little bit about you and like i said we had met before but the family is so important to you and something that that, that is not an international holiday. It's truly uh, a holiday that came out of the settling of America has become very important to you, and that's Thanksgiving. And I loved what you you said about Thanksgiving and the way that that brings your family together. Let's talk a little bit about Thanksgiving and your family because that to me sounds great. <laughs> so, how I've been here since 1993, and um, and obviously my family grew up in Mexico, and Thanksgiving doesn't exist in Mexico. Um, every day or every weekend is pretty much like a Thanksgiving. <laughs> A family gathering with friends and family. And so coming here um, over the years, we just um, learned about Thanksgiving. And so, um, you know, growing as kids and having friends who celebrated Thanksgiving, we sort of integrated the holiday into our um, family holidays as well. And so celebrating Thanksgiving for us was really special or has been special because... um, 
we just we you know we spend time with one another and we appreciate having each other and um, even though we're n- not as big as a family we we're small but we're close well in the pre-interview and the information that i got i loved what you said because it's everybody's thanksgiving uh the house is too small and it's too warm that's (laughs) that's, i don't care who you are when you have thanksgiving that's what it is everybody's there uh it's it's warm but everybody's there and it's a it's a festive time and and you are with family so as i went through this and, and found out more about you i found out just how important family was to you i want to talk a little bit about what you're doing now in catawba county with photography because from the $13 camera at the flea market that your mom, you know, worked hard and made a sacrifice to get. And then you grow, you learn about it, you take classes, you uh, find out about uh, the discipline and exactly what photography is and what it's about. You move back here so that you can have the subjects, you can have the joy, you can have the family and put meaning behind those photographs. And that translates into exactly what you're doing with your photography today because you are doing photography that brings in that joyousness and that happiness and we'll talk more about that our guest this morning Luis Mian Lara he is a photographer social media specialist business advocate and mentor right here in Catawba County hi I'm Anna Price I'm a hotel manager at JC and the only downtown loft dweller in Conover Coming from rural Pennsylvania, I love that our community is big enough to have everything you need and still feel like home. If you're passionate about something, you'll find it here. And if you can't, you can create it for yourself. I used to be homesick for Pennsylvania, and now I get homesick for Conover. Catawba County just keeps making living better. To learn more about my Catawba County, visit makinglivingbetter.com. Continuing our Making Living Better series with Catawba County. Luis Mian Lara joins us this morning. And I forgot, if you stay tuned for just a minute or two, I'm going to give you a great tip. I'm going to turn you on to something you may not know about. So we're going to give you the inside deal on something here in just a moment. But I do want to talk about right now, when we went to the break, we were talking about um, your photography work. And I mentioned the fact that, you know, when you talked about the joy and the uh, the people, that's what you really specialize in it right now, right. Is, is right, is you're in your photography. Tell us about your photography business, sir. So um, I do photography for local businesses and um, and not just local business, but for friends and family who need some portraits or events. Um, and so... Um, it started with just, you know, with friends and then... Doing a favor for friends. Right. Helping friends out and they said, we need a photographer and you were there. And then word of mouth right. has just kind of got me out there and I've enjoyed just working. Um, but most of your photography is with people and with events, right? You're capturing smiles or people's facial expressions or the warmth and the joy that happened. That's what I'm getting from you is that you're not taking just a picture of a, of a place of business. You're taking a picture and, and putting that personal part. Art, uh, in yes, the adding that warmth feeling to the to the photograph, which and having people in it is just what I like and, and enjoy doing. I want to find out a little bit more about Isabella's because during the break, because you didn't mentioned it before, and I was a little bit embarrassed because I was like, well, I need to know where Isabella's is before we continue along, and I thought I knew, but I didn't. Uh, the Isabella's is, is is a well kept secret, but is it called a taca taca? Help me with it. Taqueria. Taqueria. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're looking for one of the best, if not the best taqueria in uh, Catawba County, tell us where Isabella's is, because I thought that it was a grocery store, but if you're coming down First Avenue... You're not wrong. Oh, good. I'm not wrong. Tell us us about Isabella's and where it's located, because you're plugged in with that, too, because it is family. It is is family, family business, and um, so Las Isabella's is is on First Avenue, and it's directly across the street from the ABC store in downtown Hickory. Right. And you're right, when you walk in the door, the first thing you see is a grocery store. That's what I thought it was, a grocery store. It's a big yellow building sitting kind of catty corner from the post office, like you said, right across from the right. ABC store. And it's right where the old bus station used to be. Okay. Uh, you walk into the grocery store, and then you walk into the back, and you have a meat market. Okay. But there's also a... Butcher cut meats. Butcher cut meats, yes, sir. Fresh, which are very, very good. And Absolutely. And, um, and so then you walk into... A, uh, there's a pathway, and it leads you 
And this is why it's sort of a you know hidden secret, right. or used to be a hidden secret. Is no one really knew about it. Right. Um, you walk into this pathway, and then you see that taqueria in the back, and um, and so back then it used to be you know just an indoor seating, and now they have um, they have outdoor seating, and it's um, and it's great during the summer, warm weather. Um, they, and the cold weather they have it heated as well. So if right. you're looking for a place to eat outside in in a heated close in area, that's great but the food there is just um they have a limited menu and right. their limited menu is probably one of the best menus in town for tacos right they specialize in tacos um and their guacamole is probably one of the best and their chips are one of the best i've things. heard uh, just a rumor just recently about the guacamole and the chips and i've heard that it's fantastic we just got the thumbs up on that during the break <laughs> Help me. I, I know we're here to talk about a lot more. I don't want to take a lot of time on this. We grew up with tacos being like Taco Bell. And we had like the hard shell taco. And it was ground beef and a little lettuce and a little tomato and maybe some taco sauce and a little cheese, maybe a little sour cream. And that was it. That's You were so far beyond this with the taqueria, right? Yes. So, yes. so tell me what makes a good taco. Well, it has to be corn tortilla. Okay, corn tortilla. Corn tortilla. So it's a has, soft taco. So it's a soft corn tortilla. Right. And then you have your seasoned meats. Okay. Um, you can do pork. You can do steak. You can do chorizo. Um, chorizo, chorizo sausages. That's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and then you have your, what an authentic taco looks like is just uh, chopped up um, onions uh-huh. and then raw onions and then cilantro. Okay. You have limes on the side. Limes on the side. Okay. And you have... Um, a jalapeno and um and so um and then that's what that's what and then your red and green salsa okay and and, so, okay. and that's what you do you just squeeze your lime you add a little bit of salsa if you want you can right. add some of that jalapeno to it and um you take a bite of it and it's just okay so you'll take me there for me lunch hungry. one day or we'll, we'll have lunch there one day and you can show me what i need to do yes okay, absolutely. Very good. Well, that sounds good i'd like to do that and to have the real the real deal yes the, a real taco yes. not this hard shell stuff that we you know kind of grew up <laughs> nothing wrong with that but we'll do the real deal we can we can go there or i can bring, bring you some tacos here well, let's go there <laughs> i like the idea of walking through the grocery store then by the butcher shop and then into the back that sounds kind of exciting it is it is exciting it's, it sounds kind of uh, it's kind of fun uh you actually uh continuing on with your photography you actually went to a couple of the great artists and photographers in our area knocked on the door and said i'm here you need an intern, or ask him. Actually, do you need an intern? Right. I did so. It was um, it was uh, James LeBrens and Sally Fanjoy, and so um, I really wanted to do more with photography and learn more uh, more skills through um, the software and the camera. And so right. I had learned about them being. Um, great at what they did and so I went and knocked on their door and asked uh, Sally if they were looking for um, an intern or anyone to help them and so um, she said um, um, let me think about it <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Let me well, think about I admire it. that that you actually went and knocked on the door and said hey I'm here you know and, and I'm ready to learn yes. whatever you need and uh, from what I understand I'll carry the equipment I'll do whatever I need but so much of it uh, today with the photography the techno part of it, the uh, the online part or the computer part of it, and, and, and so much of that that you had to learn and, and learn from some of the best. So um, I, I applaud you and laud you for going in there, knocking on the door and saying, I'm here to learn. You learned quite a bit. Thank you. And, and your photography, and you're helping out other businesses now. You're one of these guys who, in our area, you're helping small businesses get off the ground. You're helping them with some of the things where people have helped you in the past. And that's a big part of what you do, making living better in our area. <laughs> Yes, um, good way to put that. Making living better. I try to help. Um, you know, Las Isabelas is is one of them, and I helped I helped out with uh, people from El Paso as well, the family from there, right. and um, just to kind of help them. Um, understand more of how you know the city has grants that they can help them with you know um, and so um, sometimes they're too caught up in in their own business right. because they their time is very limited to really focusing and so um, outside of uh, you know of learning of how they can make their business better and me through friends I've learned that um, you know, there's so much the city can sometimes do to help. Right. And uh, and I try to pass that on to people who are not aware of what's um, going on. Of what's going on. Right.
The Making Living Better podcast is produced monthly in partnership with WHKY, Catawba County's source for first-person storytelling. Find us on makinglivingbetter.com, on Podbean, or wherever you download your podcasts.